Hi, my name's Paul Cresswell. Welcome to Paul's Tackle Reviews. The purpose of this YouTube channel is to give you some real reviews of tackle and stuff that's been out on the bank from an unbiased, unsponsored angler, which is myself. I'll take you through the details and give you information on each item so you can make up your mind whether it's right for you. Just because it works for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Today I'm going to look at two waterproof jackets and this is the follow on video from the bib and brace video that I uploaded earlier this week. I was going to do it as one long video but it just got too long. So today I'm going to look at waterproof jackets and I've got two to take you through. The first one is the Drennan three quarter length jacket and three quarter length means it comes down to around there and round to the bottom of your bum. Um, I bought this jacket I think in 2012 just before me and Gary went to Whiteacres and I've used it extensively since in some terrible weather and all weathers if I'm going fishing I go whatever the weather and this jacket has never let me down never leaked and I've been bone dry having worn the jacket I paid £120 back then to buy this jacket and I think it's been great value and I still wear it to this day so let's have a look at the jacket and we've got the hood and there is a slightly stiffened peak to the hood there and then on the back of the hood there's a velcro fastening so you can adjust how far it comes forward or back there is a, a zip for the hood so you could zip the hood off i don't know why you would it's a waterproof jacket uh, i've never noticed it flapping around i've always left it on moving on to the zips it's got really good strong zips never let me down it's not a two-way zip so you can't undo it from the bottom and it's also got this bit that goes over and then velcros the other side to prevent water going through the zip on the outside there's a pocket on each side it's not a zip pocket I've used those pockets that then they've been fine and on the cuffs there is an adjuster for tightening and then there is a neoprene lining that sits around your wrist that prevents water going up your arm while you're fishing in the rain. Moving on to the inside and there's two zip pockets one on either side on the inside. What I will say about this jacket is uh, if you compare it to the one we're coming on to and the Halcon Hunt Gore-Tex uh, you can't see the outer material and all the tape seams which are undoubtedly there it has a, a thin lining to it I wouldn't say it was a thick lining um, I, I want to say polyester I don't know what it is to be honest but it's a thin lining what I think that does is whilst this is a really breathable jacket it does it isn't as breathable as the one I'm coming on to I think if you've been setting up and you're getting warm and then you sit down to fish sometimes you can feel a bit warmer in this jacket but it does settle down as you sat fishing the waterproof rating on this jacket is 25,000 and when we talked about the Gore-Tex that's at 28,000 so this is just a peg below that's still excellent waterproofing I'm going to put the jacket on, apologise if it interferes with the microphone. So if I'm buying clothing, I'm buying a t-shirt or a jumper, I buy a size large and this jacket is a size large is the perfect fit for me what I will say though is it, it's a generous fit so what it means is you can layer underneath and in summer I might just sit with a t-shirt and wear the jacket over the top 
but in winter in the very coldest times I could have a base layer, a gilet, a thin fleece and then maybe even a windproof fleece all underneath that to give me some warmth while I'm fishing. I'm not one of these people who advocates a separate winter suit. I've had winter suits in the past and they're all very padded and you put them on and they keep you warm but I do, I do think it impairs your manoeuvrability and you feel a bit like Michelin Man. So let's zip the jacket up. Take that right to the top, take that fold put over. So the proof in. Got the hood coming over the top. You can see there, plenty of room within the jacket. And then there's also a couple of toggles on the side if you really want to enclose your head and tighten it around there. So I got this. I think this style of jacket from Drennan's been out around 10 years it was the first of this style when it came out for them and they've now moved on to their 25k range as it's now and i i think it's a rebranding more than any substantial changes to the jacket i have seen the jackets in the shop and i don't think they're very much different again it's the same waterproof level and they're around 160 pounds now in the shops. In terms of cleaning it, I tend to clean it with my Gore-Tex, so it's in the washing machine, but using Granger's, having washed the machine out first, and that's covered on the Halcon Hunt video. It's been a great jacket, and I still wear it to this day. Last year, I bought myself another jacket and I wanted something a little bit more lightweight, but still having the waterproofing. And I've got the MAP pole jacket. Now, as a pole jacket, you'll see that it comes just below your kind of belt level, so it's slightly shorter. I will say, I do think you need to wear a bib and brace with that rather than over trousers, otherwise there'll be a gap at the back probably and it might get a bit cool or damp. So this is the jacket. I paid just under £100. They're still available around that level. It has a waterproof rating of 20,000 and you might say, oh well, it's getting lower, but 20,000 is still a massive amount of waterproofing. You can buy 5,000 waterproof jackets and they'll still get, protect you in an awful lot of circumstances. And a lot of the stuff from mainstream manufacturers, the Preston DF30, the Mava MVR20, that's 20,000 rated. So it's a common rating amongst fishing tackle. Let's take you through. And again, we've got a stiffened peak, but it's got a bit of wire in there. So it's, it's stiffer than the Drennan. On the back, there's a tightener again, so you can decide how far forward it comes. The hood isn't detachable, but it can be folded into the into the neck roll there and there's a little opening to enable you to do that. I've never done that. I just have that behind me. I've never noticed it flapping about or causing me a problem. And when it rains, you just whip it over the top. Moving on to the cuffs, again, similar arrangement except the the liner isn't neoprene so that's probably not as good i haven't noticed water getting in there again it's got a tightener i'm going to put lots of photos up here some of the photos of the color of this look as a bit looks a bit odd this video is the best to give you the color of this we're going on to an outside pocket on each side that's a zip pocket on each side and I would say that that's a waterproof zip so I've never noticed waterproof in there that's quite handy there are no zips uh, no pockets on the inside of this jacket moving on to the inside and it doesn't have a lining 
So you can see all the nicely taped steam, seams and heated seams and all the protection. It's, it's a light grey, it's a similar material to Cortex. Um, it, it is a very breathable jacket and you can wear this in summer and it will it will be as breathable as anything that I've worn as a jacket over the top. So let's put it on. So if you go on the map website they I think they describe it as a generous fit and that means that there's plenty of room in there and that's great for layering so all the layers I could put on the other jacket I can put with this over the top in winter no problem but likewise you can just wear this over a t-shirt what I found myself doing is if I'm sat in summer and I'm fishing in a wheel uh, a t-shirt and maybe it goes a little bit cool or there's some rain on the way I just reach for this it's a windproof jacket but because of the breathability you're not going to get too warm in it you've still got full maneuverability it's just a great way of carrying less layers and using this as your next layer maybe on top of your t-shirt in the warmer weather let's tip it up <laughs> There and put those across. There is a little press stud at the bottom to get it tight. As you can see, there's plenty of room in there, nice and comfortable. Just whip the hood over, you're in position, nice and stiffened. There aren't any tighteners there, but I've never had a problem. I often wear a neck gaiter anyway. Um, and just whip it back off and carry on fishing. It's a really comfy, lightweight top that's easy to take with you. And I really, really like this jacket. And I wear it all year round. Now, if I turned up to fish and the forecast was it was going to tip it down all day, then I just reach for the Drennan automatically because I've done that over the years and it's kept me dry. But what I will say is I've worn this in fairly heavy rain. I've had no issues with any leaks whatsoever and I'm sure over the next year I'll wear it in full rain all day and I can give it a really good test. But so far it's been an excellent jacket. So that's the two jackets today. There's only one other thing to talk about. Oh, just to say that's also a size large that I got, so the sizing is comparable. There's only a, one other waterproof garment that I have, and it's a pair of Golf Gore-Tex over trousers. I got these second hand off eBay, and these are for those very rare, and I mean rare, odd days in the summer where it's baking hot all day. You turn up in your t-shirt and shorts, the forecast is you're going to be sat in full sun all day. And so I wear these normally just over my boxer shorts and that's it. It's not about the waterproofing for rain, but it still gives you protection if you put in the net between your legs to unhook a fish and all the ground bait and other stuff. I don't really think it's that easy to fish the pole fishing in shorts so these are what I wear on those odd red hot days as Gore-Tex it's great for breathability so it stops you getting sweaty in the nether region shall we say great little addition I carry that around with me and on a good year I might use it two or three times but it's worth having that's the review completed today there's going to be more videos coming so if you subscribe to this channel you get automatically notified. The next video next week will look at the Preston ICM and ICS system and how I use those and the, the week after I'll be looking at the map shallow short kits, how I use those but also how they fit onto Maver and Browning number four sections which 
it often comes up on the forums as well. If you want to give me a like and a thumbs up, that's great. It kind of spurs me on. Feel free to leave any comments below. Thanks very much for watching Tight Lines.